Yeah, I'm Brian Cantrell. I'm the CTO of Joint, um, which is a company owned by Samsung. And uh, I live in Piedmont, California, in the East Bay. Um, so let's see, right now we are, we're a cloud computing company, uh, so we build both a storage substrate, which we call Manta, which is like an S3, as well as a compute substrate um, that we, one can use for, for cloud computing workloads. As it turns out, there's a lot that's interesting about both of those problems, um, especially when you push them out to the margin and you care about uh, extraordinary levels of scale, uh, levels of performance, levels of reliability, throughput, and so on. Um, there are, are a bunch of interesting problems that, that come out of the woodwork. Some days it feels like too many interesting problems, um, but it feels like there are, it, it's remarkable how many problems you only see when you get to a certain level of dimension. And not because that dimension is necessarily required for the problem, but simply when you have that much more of a surface area, you're more likely to encounter these incredibly strange um, and honestly somewhat delightful issues. I mean, they're, they're, they're very interesting technologically. You know, I, I was in the functional track, um, which is intriguing to me. I haven't really done a whole lot in functional languages. Um, it's definitely intriguing. I mean, I'm, I'm a programmer. I'm a software engineer. I do architecture. I, I, honestly, these things are all kind of intriguing. The data pipelines thing is 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 not something I've done historically, but I'm, I'm interested in. I mean, I think one of the things that is that I like about software engineers in general is we tend to be a pretty curious bunch. Um, so honestly, there's a lot of value in all those tracks for me. Well, so today I was talking about uh, my recent love affair with Rust, uh, and the you know the, the the best practice that I think Rust enforces is I've always been a big believer in being thoughtful about the way you develop your software, and Rust really enforces that whether you like it or not. Um, Rust shifts the cognitive load from the software running in production to the developer in development, um, which can be a challenge, but I think yields much better artifacts ultimately. That, you know, I, I like learning about folks in, that are doing kinds of software that are totally foreign to me. Um, and there's a lot of that here. There's a lot of very different kinds of systems. I, I mean, I've, my career has been in infrastructure software, cloud computing software, um, and this is really, there's a lot of different kind of software here. So I just yeah, the, hope to learn something about a domain that I, that I don't know much about. So I'm not a Scala programmer at all, actually. I've never written a line of Scala in my life. Um, I actually happened, just like by accident, to have seen what must have been one of the very first Scala presentations um, in what must have been 2004. Um, and it was, I thought it was intriguing, I thought it was interesting, um, but I am not at all a Scala person. I think what Scala does point us to, I mean, I've always been, I, I, I think what I, what's interesting to me about Scala is that it took some core values around expressiveness, um, around um, around the ability to compose composability, um, and coupled that with the interoperability with Java to do something really interesting and novel. And I think that there's there are lessons to be drawn there. Um, I don't know to the degree that I'm ever going to implement in Scala, but I think that there's some really interesting lessons there to be drawn um, by other other languages, other environments. You know, I th we had a great panel last night. That was a lot of fun. Um, we had, we had, I think, what five technologists on the panel. Um, really interesting crew across a whole bunch of different systems. Um, done a whole bunch of different things, um, and it's, it's very inspiring to sit with people who have built really big, real, interesting systems, especially when they're totally foreign in some regards, and you can just uh, appreciate this kind of this wonderful thing that's been built that you didn't really know anything about before.